and welcome back to another one of my shorties. Now today we are going to go over something that must be gone over unfortunately and the reason why is because you might see something similar to this in just about most of the games you watch or play. Some sort of Chinese variation. So the question then is as white if you are seeing Chinese an awful lot, what are you going to do against it? There are many different variations here. One thing that we used to do obsessively, for example, is approach the bottom. We don't approach here. I mean, this is going back way too far for me to cover. I, even I'm not doing this. Everyone should know why we don't want to approach in a normal fashion. So what we used to do and sometimes still do today, is we played on the bottom. For example, we would perhaps approach maybe from down here and see if we can't get our opponent to just enclose the corner. Why? Because an enclosure with an extension is a lot easier to handle than this rather open-ended uh, Fuseki that has lovely expansionary possibilities that may force us to play the dreaded move of the approach into a pincered stone. So yes, sometimes we played here, and occasionally our opponent would enclose, and we would back off, not with a black stone, that would be very, very nice, but we would back off maybe with a white stone, since that is our color, maybe low, maybe even high, but we would get a little bit of a base for ourselves, and it launched into a really, really easy game where they approach, and we can back off and acquire territory, and be all nice and happy. Sometimes it does not go that way. Occasionally our opponents actually shoulder hit, trying to keep the theory behind the Fuseki alive, and that they're going to make a very, very large area. The largest area they can get their greedy little hands on. Because if you are looking at something like this, then perhaps, just perhaps, you will not be satisfied with your result, even if you are developing the left-hand side. You see that your opponent is developing all of this as easy points, potentially easy points. Then no matter how you try and develop this, you may not feel very comfortable with everything that black can get here for themselves. And if you are feeling that way, then perhaps you want another way of approaching. And now there are an awful lot of ways open to you. But I'm going to recover one of the more newer ways that you may be a little bit uncertain of. That approach is smack on the inside. Now doesn't that look unusual? Doesn't that seem to go against just about everything that we've ever heard of for Fuseki? You're typically supposed to approach on the most open part of the board. That is something we tell many of our students. Or maybe you're supposed to approach here because it follows the same general principle. It is a nice open side of the board. It makes absolute sense. But this one kind of makes sense too. Because you see, uh, most common result here, not to kit or not to uh, pincer. Sorry, usually we don't pincer because that's kind of a little bit of a light pincer here. Already pincering our stone, don't really want to double down on it. Instead, we typically want to force this group to try to live, because while it's trying to live. then maybe black can actually build up off of here. And that seems pretty reasonable for both players. If we are going to look at potential for both parties right now, we can see, look at that. We have got a cut that we can aim at. We have got an approach that we can aim at. We can still come at this and see if we can force them to enclose. Or the ultimate dream here, the ultimate dream. Maybe black does not like the approach on top and defends, and we get to go back and approach here normally. This would be the dream scenario. 
for using this. Because then, okay, playing twice in a row, now that really is a dream scenario. Now, we would play almost normal Jiseki here, but as we can see, our opponent at this point has these two stones that are kind of being sandwiched between a group that obviously has gotten some shape and a group that is rapidly getting a lot of thickness to it. So on one hand, we have thickness, shape, and a weak group. And thus you are quickly realizing the point of approaching here, because we're setting up an attack. We're looking at this one little stone that's causing us such a headache. Like we can't approach there normally because we're going to get smashed. Well, if we get some shape first, maybe we can do the smashing and not the other way around. So that's a nice, fun, aggressive, potential way of playing this out. Uh, as black, of course, you might realize that that danger is in fact there. And you might say to yourself, no, 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 no. I am not going to allow that to occur. I do not want to play high as a result. Because I do not want this approach to befall me. And I do not want to have to spend a move here. So what I am going to do, I am going to play low. That way I don't have to worry about that ugly little approach. That is step one of trying to counter the brilliant idea that we are seeing from white. Step two, is maybe you're going to play it safe. Maybe why might want to try to expand. Oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you do. But you know they want to try to approach here and maybe that's not good. Maybe you're playing a stronger opponent and you don't want to get into that complicated situation. So what you could do is just calmly enclose. In fact, at the slight cost of a little bit of aggression, you could even play this here, giving yourself a very familiar shape that I'm sure we all know. Now, is this still the Chinese Fuseki? Nope, it is an enclosure with an extension with maybe some invasion points that uh, you can find in some books. But it's a lot more solid, and both players are still fairly happy. So we can see why white is playing this way. There's a lot of options, and black has to be really, really careful on just how we uh, handle this. We can't go, or we could, if we want to embrace this way, this aggressive way, we could go super aggressive, try to chase white out, and maybe try and force as much territory as possible here knowing full well we are going to get counterattacked, and that small knight might be the aim of this counterattack. Get influence, break up the ladder, and slice through. It could be possible. It could very, very, very well be possible if you are that sort of aggressive player. I am not telling you how to play. Just giving you ideas on how you can play if you so wish. But you might be saying, hang on, you went through that kind of quickly. What if our opponent does decide to pincer us when we approach in the manner that you say is new? Well, you don't have to worry about this. This is potentially a very large framework that you have to approach and reduce. This is the goal of the Chinese Fuseki. But think for a moment. If we dive into the corner, something very, very simple, because we don't want to jump out. We know that if we jump out, nothing's really happening to this stone. So if we jump out, not good. But if we go into corner, then that might get a little bit more interesting because black can develop, as we see here. There we go, black developing, keeping us nicely cut off, like so even has sente. But notice, it's really difficult to build up off of third line stones. So what is the worst thing that our opponent can do here? 
can come out, which is not sente. Could do this, which is sente, but is inferior uh, most of the time because giving our opponent this and now a potential turn here is very, very strong. This area is still nice and open. So maybe plays here. But white still has reductions here, still has reductions here. All of these lovely little shoulder hits, all of these potential uh, Aji enforcing moves to either connect up or to cut through, all of these are potential ways that you might be able to reduce. And again, I apologize that I don't have nice labeling tools. I should find a way to integrate that into my video. I am thinking about that. I am thinking about that. Uh, but yes, these are all nice potential moves for, to reduce this area that usually you don't find uh, quite so many in a uh, growing Moyo. So this is still pretty nice for you. No reason to freak out. No reason to freak out at all. So you have all of those, and you still have the approach. So this is actually kind of what we hope black does. Easy ways to reduce, still have an approach on the corner, and even if he turns around and plays territory now, then all of these low stones aren't very uh, scary in terms of territory, just, you know, some third line, two, four, six, eight, we can easily count what's there. Corner, not very uh, scary without extensions. So it's all nicely contained, all nicely contained. If black actually encourages this variation, then I think white's won in the opening uh, over black. Black has been bamboozled. So don't do this if you're black. You don't want to be bamboozled. So there you have it. If you have been playing against the Chinese Fuseki and you have perhaps uh, been approaching on the bottom or maybe in closing, I am not saying that this move is superior to uh, either of the moves that you're used to playing. I'm not saying that you should stop playing these and play that exclusively. I am just saying you have another pretty powerful move to add to your repertoire in dealing with the Chinese Fuseki. So I hope you enjoy that and have lots of fun experimenting with that in your own games. As always, you can drop comments down below and let me know how it's been going for you, if you like it or hate it. I am relatively interested to know how that's been going, and I do read all those comments. So I will see you guys next time for another one of my shorties, and I hope you all have a great week. Take care, everyone.